How far has Lexus come in 10 years? Well, today I have a 2014 LS460 beside a 2024 LS500. To answer the question, what has changed and which one would I buy? Stick around to the end of the video for that. I'm Justin Mason from Performance Lexus in St. Catharines. Make sure you hit like and subscribe for more Lexus related content. Okay, so let's start with the 2014 LS460. This is the F-Sport package, which gives it this F-Sport grille. It's sort of one of the first iterations of it, so it's in two parts. You can see the upper, and then the support beam in the center, and then the lower. And again, it's the earlier versions of the spindle grille, but holds up very well and is trimmed nicely by this Lexus chrome outer. I thought that I would more prefer like a, like a dark chrome outer, but with the black exterior, I think this one suits it very well. In terms of other things in the bumpers, we have actual real venting for the brakes and the tires, as well as some extra spindle grill off to the side, some fog lights, some parking sensors, tow hook cover in the center, and headlight washers, which I always do love. Now I have the daytime running lights on to show you the how crisp and clean those are. They aren't quite frosted, which I wish they were, they're actually more like just diffused, if that makes sense. And these very, very bright signals and amber four ways. It's some of the brightest I've ever seen in any car because it's not like an LED strip. It's more like LED bulbs blasting off in your face. Above that, we have some nice body lines, a very nice hood that's huge with a bulge in the center, as well as a fender with some nice angles as well. The interesting thing to think about with this style of LS is the hood sort of isn't most of the front end. Like the hood actually stops here when you think about it. And you have this big fender piece that's on top where most cars, the hood goes all the way to the side. This is actually stationary and that hood kind of goes to a point and I always really liked that. Over to the LX500 in beautiful silver color, we have some F-Sport styling grill, but this is actually a luxury package. So you can see that styling has sort of just spread to the rest of the lineup when it comes to packages and a much bigger grill, but a very similar chrome outer. So instead of having the middle sort of pillar be exposed, it's sort of hidden behind that spindle grill and it's just all gotten a little bit bigger over the years. We also have a very nicely frosted daytime running light that wraps around that headlight just a little bit more and it's still a very bright amber light. It's a little more crisp. It's not quite as bright as the previous generation, uh, but the headlights are much brighter than the previous generation because they're a triple beam instead of just a single beam. We also still have the headlight washer to spray onto those headlights, some parking sensors, a tow hook cover, and a big hood that actually goes all the way to the fenders instead of being a little more narrow. I actually like the old one better for that, but I like these body lines a lot more. We have this really sort of sharp drop off edge that diffuses into the side and then a bigger one in the center that really gives you a nice vision line when you're driving it. So getting to the side of the 2024 LS, we have this 20 inch multi-spoke wheel and behind it is a big brake kit with air suspension so that when you park, the car can raise up, you can get out and when you start driving, it'll go down again. And that comes standard on most models for the new LS. 14 LS 460, we have a 19 inch two-tone wheel. Actually, when this wheel came out, I thought it was the coolest looking thing because of the fronts were kind of like a brushed aluminum with a clear coat on it. And then the sides are all sort of like, just like a gray. Behind that 19 inch wheel, we have a Brembo big brake kit because it's the LS F-Sport package. And the brakes are very grabby and very expensive to replace, but they last a long time. And it really does make the car feel a lot lighter than it is. 
We also have air ride in this so that when you park, the car can come up and can go down when you start driving. And I've even seen some people get a special module to make it go lower if you wanted to. It kind of tricks the system a little bit. The doors on the 2024 LS seem a lot modern, but they're actually a little bit outdated now in 2024. So we have chrome on the outside and a little dimple on top to actually lock the vehicle. You can just pull it to unlock it and it has soft closing doors. It's one of the few Lexuses in the lineup to have soft core doors, so it'll just suck right in. But the size and weight of it really give you an idea of how luxurious the LS is. Even the back one is massive. Actually, the back door sometimes seems bigger than the front door and has the soft close as well as it sucks in, or you can just feel the, the heavy weight of that back door. So on the 2014, we have definitely an outdated handle, but it still works. So it is fully wrapped in chrome, and instead of the dimple to lock it, it's an actual button. So you actually press that. However, it's still the unlock is still the same as the new one where you can just touch your finger inside there. It is a very heavy door. In fact, I think it's heavier than the new one, and it still has the soft close. So even in 2014, the soft close works the exact same as the 2024. And even that rear door, it, it is heavy. It's definitely heavier than the new one. And actually, the soft close works probably just as quick as well. So zooming out to look at the side of the 2024, you can see that it has chrome that sort of wraps around all of the door windows and it has a pretty sleek profile. In fact, the 2024 LS 500 sort of more has like a coupe-like silhouette. And because of that, as it tapers to the back, it's very aerodynamic and very sleek. It still has a very big quarter panel, which I like. It gives a little bit of that presence and shows you how big this vehicle is. In fact, it replaces the L, the long wheelbase version of the LS from previous years because of how big it is. So the side profile of the 2014 is a little different. It's a little boxier, but we do still have the chrome that wraps around as well as the chrome at the bottom. And you'll see it's not quite as coupe-like, I would say, with the silhouette. So it's a little more rounded. It stays high for a little bit longer and then eventually tapers down but it does still have the big quarter panel here that gives you a little bit of that presence. In the 2014 era, if you wanted more back seat space, you would go to the 460L, which would be the long wheelbase version. So how about the rear design language? Let's look at the taillights. On the 2014, we have these interesting three-dimensional shapes in behind that taillight lens, and they sort of have a few different layers to it. We see this design language translate into newer models, just a newer take on it. The interesting thing is the taillight lens is actually curved and because of those three dimensional shapes on the inside of the lens, it's like, it's like peeking through a crystal ball or like a snowball and seeing stuff go on inside. And that's what it is. It's very three dimensional. It curves with that lens and I really like it. Then we have this chrome underneath the Lexus emblem. We have LS460, all wheel drive because it is the all wheel drive version. And since it's the sport version, at the bottom, we have a rear diffuser and some exhaust ports as well. As for the back of the 2024, those taillights are a little bit less three-dimensional. However, there still is some depth to them. We see still a layered design where each one of those frosted sort of L shapes are sort of like stacked and staggered on top of each other, but they are definitely a lot more crisp and a lot less rounded. They're not sort of wrapping on the vehicle as it did on the 2014. Back here, we still have a little bit of chrome, just like the other one, with the Lexus emblem in the same spot. It says LS500 all-wheel drive, and there is no rear diffuser at the back here, which is interesting. It's sort of just, maybe just like a, an accent piece. That could be because it's not the F Sport, though. So sitting in the 2024 LS in the luxury package, obviously, no one is surprised. It is very comfortable. The seat has many, many adjustments. It has massaging front seats, heated and cooled front seats, and there's just so much cushion support and customization there that it's an absolute dream to sit in here. This one is the Palomino interior. We have some beautiful wood grain 
uh, pointed all over the place and one of the most pretty door panels I've ever seen in my life with this sort of floating armrest. It's super comfortable. It's more of an extension of the seat than a separate moving door piece, I guess you could say. Obviously the latest and greatest. So we have the newest Lexus Safety Sense with things like traffic jam assist, bird's eye view, self parking, tons and tons of tech. They eliminated the, the Lexus remote touchpad, brought that screen closer and it's an updated optically bonded glass with Apple CarPlay, Android Auto, all the latest and greatest stuff with a really crisp display. We have another beautiful new display as the gauge cluster. It's not the old TFT one anymore for 2024. It's actually been updated to just this crisp, customizable screen that's there. And it is really gorgeous. We have a massive heads up display, multiple drive modes. We have comfort, normal, sport, and sport plus because of that air suspension, all of that works very nicely. And it makes this car feel less like a limousine and more like a luxury tour, which is really nice. So kind of like what the GS used to be where it's fun to drive, it's smooth to drive, and it still has lots of room for everybody else. Alcantara headrests, as well as very nice appointments everywhere. The dash seems very layered. There's amazing accent lighting to showcase all of the design art is what I would call it. And overall, just an amazing experience being in the front seat. All right, I'm very excited to sit in the back of the 2024 now and start with that measurement. So the seat to, to seat, I guess you could say, is 11 inches. So a little bit bigger there. And I'm just gonna push this back and we're 28. So even right off the hop, it is bigger back here, which I was a little sort of skeptical about. The roof is definitely a little bit lower, but I have a party trick for that. When you fold down this massive center council, not council, council, I have some controls here to be able to move the seats around and I can recline this seat quite a ways. I'm going to do it all the way for you. I'm almost laying down right now and I have lots of headroom now. My legs aren't quite touching. They're almost touching. It's very close, but the experience is so different. So much of this car is tailored to the back seat. And also on here, I have heated and cooled seats and some other things like being able to open and close things like the curtains, which is really nice. So I can actually just press a button and that'll happen. Also, we have a little bit of storage here, some cup holders up front with some really nice glossy wood grain. Alcantara, I have the same classic vanity mirrors, although the light is a little bit more of modern frosted glass. And speaking of lights, the map lights here, I have two different types. One has like a crystal finish, which is very beautiful when the light hits it. And the other one is actually got two settings. So you can have a really bright map light or a little bit more dim of a bright light. Um, also, the ambient lighting in here is night and day. The other LS felt very dark inside, which is still okay. This one is a lot more bright and warm. There's sort of ambient lights shining on bits of the door where the ambient lights on the other one was just sort of at your feet. And overall, just a lot more comfortable and luxurious for sure. But let's hear it sounds when you fire it up. Okay, so it does feel like a totally different car getting into the 2014 LS F-Sport. The seats are still very comfortable. They don't have as much support as the other ones. Now, this car is a little bit older. It's got 140,000 K on it, so it could just be worn down. I will say the leather has held up well. You can tell it's a high quality leather. It is getting a little shiny in a few spots, but the age is showing a little bit of character, which is nice. And I do like that the headrest have F-Sport very much protruding from them. I think that's a really nice touch. Okay, everything else. So the steering wheel has perforated leather on the sides, which is very grippy. We have aluminum trim across the whole dashboard and all the materials feel very, very good and high quality. I don't have any type of radar cruise control or lane departure alert or anything like that because that was starting to just become more in the higher packages at that time. We do have some switches and controls here for the recessed big screen. Now, 
sometimes I do like the recessed screen because one, it doesn't get any glare from the sun. Two, you don't leave any fingerprints because you use the mouse. Now, when this mouse first came out, I did love it. I got used to it very quickly. I thought it was really intuitive. It's not much of a distraction. Now I know the more late, latest tech can be a little bit more intuitive. Um, but it's still in a nice spot where you're still just relaxed when you use it. You don't have to reach way up or anything like that. It's very sort of like a second nature. Also, we have things like comfort mode, sport mode, sport and sport plus. So because of that air ride, the sport plus can really tighten things up. And I can tell you from experience, it's nice to have the best of both worlds. I can put it in comfort when I'm in the city and it's bumpy and the, the air ride will just kind of softly float me across those bumps or I can tighten things up in sport plus and really push this big heavy car to its limit, which is nice. We also have a snow mode, some heated and cooled seats, um, a rear sunshade for just that, that very back and a little hidden is I can actually control this front seat from switches on the side. That's mostly for the back seat, but it is nice to be able to reach over and touch that. We have the classic Lexus clock, no heads up display, nothing to write home about with the gauge cluster. It's just needles and it seems to work. I do have blind spot, heated steering wheel, stuff like that. Overall, not a ton of amenities for being a full size luxury car, but it is the sport model. So it's not supposed to have a ton of amenities. Okay, so quickly sitting in the back of the 2014 LS, it is very comfortable back here. I don't have a ton of amenities going on, but it's still a really relaxing experience. The leather is very high quality. I even have things like the vanity mirror. So before getting out, I can check that mirror uh, and that's what having a big Lexus is all about. I do have the controls for the front seat here to move. And if I fold down this, I can control my heated seats and also the rear curtain behind me with a little bit of storage. I think there's cup holders up here. Yes, there is. I have uh, a little bit of a charger there and some vents, which is nice. Overall, really good appointments. Oh, I do have a pass through, which is a nice touch. And another nice touch is the little armrest here. Sorry, the arm hook thing is padded leather, which I thought was really important. Actually, everything you touch is pretty much padded leather. But I did want to measure something. I wanted to see, so I'm six foot one, and I wanted to see two things. One, the driver's seat, two, the back here, which is about 27 inches, and I also wanted to see the driver's seat to the front of the cushion, which is about 10 inches. So I wanted to compare that to the new 2024 one. But let's see how it sounds. That is a V8 for sure. It's not nearly as quiet as the new 3.4 liter V6. However, it does have a little bit of that character to it and I like it. Okay, so what about powertrains? The 2014 LS has a V8, a 4.6 liter V8 with the mid 300s horsepower. The new 2024 LS has a 3.4 liter V6 twin turbo with well over 400 horsepower. Now, I did think that the old one would be heavier, but with all the gadgets and comfort and luxury, the new one is actually a little bit heavier. However, it has a 10-speed transmission versus the 8-speed transmission, and that mated with that new engine creates better fuel economy. So, the question is, which one would I buy? Well, I'll let you in on a little secret. I did buy this one. This is one of my personal vehicles, my 2014 LS460, and I love so much about it, the character, the V8, all of those things, and how smooth this V8 is, is amazing. But the creature comforts of the new one, that lush interior, all the technology, the back seat space, the massaging seats, all of those things, to me, would be where I would go. If, in fact, if I could just take that interior and put it in my 2014, I'd be a very happy camper. Also, this v twin turbo V6 has a driving experience that feels more like a small sports car when you want it to be. And I really like that as well. So let me know in the comments below which one you would choose and please let me know what you thought of this video. If there's any other comparison videos you would like me to do when it comes to new versus old and what has changed over the years. I'm Dustin Mason from Performance Lexus and I'll see you in the next one.